Welcome back to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. We continue our conversation now with First Lady of New Jersey, Tammy Murphy. You gave a, a very powerful speech when you were talking to people involved with the Me Too movement, and you joined the movement when you gave that speech. Mm -hmm. uh, I think everybody was surprised. And I, I listened to the speech, um, and, and you've kept that silent for so long, only telling a few people. Why did you feel like that was the moment? Uh, a friend of mine knew the story and said that they really thought it would help others if I shared that story. And it was not something that I said, absolutely, I'm all in. I, I had to think about it for a minute. Uh, it turns out, it, I guess it was a good thing to do because I've had so many people come up to me from different walks of life and say, that really helped me, or my sister never told me she was attacked and now she's come out and told me, or you know, there have been different, different people who it's helped, so I guess if it helped one person, then it was worthwhile. You have, you, you had a, a powerful voice in the campaign, and you, you've had a pretty powerful voice. How many speeches are you giving a week? Uh, it depends on the week. Um, you know, between panel discussions and roundtables and all sorts of things, I've, I've probably done 30, probably, since January. Just depends. Yeah, and as you give these speeches, uh, I, and just like the, the Me Too speech, when mm -hmm. people come up to you mm -hmm. and say, you, you, that moved me, or Me Too as well, and does that, does that prompt action? Does, does, do the words then kind of transform into action? I think it's awareness. I think a lot of this is, is making it a conversation, because I think many of the things, particularly for me, the speech I gave in Morristown, which you're, you're referring to earlier, um, I think the fact that, that I said that happened to me, it's enabled other people to find their own voice. And it wasn't as though I did anything specifically, but because I now have you know, people like you who want to talk to me, I guess people are going to hear about that speech. And that's, that's why. That's why it helps. And that's the, you know, but to, to initiate these conversations and to get like-minded souls who are considering um, ways forward, I think, it's, I think that's the only way we can move the needle. Right, and I understand, and you have certain uh, power as the First Lady, and that's the question I was asking. It's mm -hmm. not really a, it's not even a speaking tour. You give speeches and then you listen, right? That's correct. I mean, and then people come up to you afterwards. And right. then, but then you have a certain power. Does that, does that turn in, I guess what I was turning is, what, the, what is the next step on that? So, I mean, let's talk about, for example, the, the, um, the maternal health issue. Um, you know, that started off with, with my kind of looking around, trying to figure out what, can I, what sources can I look at and, and who can I talk to about this. And it's taken me to all corners of the state with different stakeholders, whether they be foundations that are looking at, at women and children's health to figure out how they might get involved, or to um, the Camden Coalition, for example. I spoke with them, um, who are helping uh, people find their way, uh, who find themselves on the streets. There's, there's, there's many different stakeholders, and by my um, convening people together, I think that that is going to help um, ultimately find a solution. I'm not saying I'm the person who's going to find the solution, but I think that by bringing people together, uh, I think that that's, that's really the way forward. So, you know, I've, I've been really fortunate, um, you know, to have done that on the maternal health issue. I'm going to keep, keep at that one. Um, there's, a lot, there's a lot more to do in that front. Um, but there's a lot of different topics that I'm working on. You know, I'm, the drum, you know, the state house is closed, as you may have noticed. It's going to be closed until July of 2022, which uh, you may have noticed that's after my husband leaves office. So, um, you know, we're in these offices, which are which are perfectly fine, but they aren't as representational as we would like. And we want to open up Drumthwacket, the governor's um, residence, so that we can have um, give everybody in New Jersey access to Drumthwacket, you know, both through educational programs and uh, lots of receptions and dinners. And we've hosted a number of things there already, but that's another big project for me right now. Because no, then, and how's that coming along? That's a that's a wonderful idea. It's a great concept to have a one table dinner where where it's one discussion that's going on at all times and you can bring all different stakeholders around the table, it's really effective. So that's something we want to do. So for example, when we got to Drum Thwacket, there were, I think you could see 24 people at the table, and we've done a few things like extending the table underneath where no one will see, and we can now get up to 40 people at the table, which is really great. Um, so we've had, you know, we've had, we had a uh, Seder there last week, and we like to put different people together. So for example, you might say a Seder is only going to have people of the Jewish faith, but we invited Muslims, we invited Christians, we invited all sorts of people and put them all around the table, and, they, and many of them had never been to a Seder before. 
So it's been, it was very, that was really fun, I think, for a lot of the guests. It's nice that you're living your life the same way your husband put together his cabinet. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, it's funny you say that. I remember when we were on the campaign trail in the very beginning and, uh, and in the primary, everyone said, oh, you know, Phil's very liberal, he's very left. If he gets through the primary, he's got to go more toward the, more toward the center for the general. I remember Phil and I looked at each other and said, well, that's who we are. So what are we going to do just because if you, if you make it past one, one uh, goal line, you're then going to just suddenly switch. So we've just, we're, we're pretty consistent. I think that you'll find that we're very consistent in that front. I have one last question. We started sure. the interview by me saying people are trying to figure out your role. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when your time is done, hopefully in eight years, when you look back, <laughs> yes. what, what do you, how do you want people to remember you? What do you, what do you want to have, have accomplished? You know, um, I just think we, we want to help. We want to, we want to make New Jersey stronger and we want to make um, more people feel like um, the American dream here in New Jersey is attainable. We want, to, we want to have our children stay in New Jersey. You know, our biggest export right now are high school and college seniors. And you know, I want people to have pride in New Jersey. I want people to feel really good about where they are and why they're here and really love our state like we do because it's, a, it's, it's an incredible state with so much to offer but we've just kind of been, we've lost our way a little bit I think. So if we can help get us back on track a little bit, that would make me really happy. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Yeah, absolutely. New Jersey's First Lady, Tammy Murphy. Jersey Matters continues right after this.